My name is Tom Bagwell. I'm the Executive Vice President of Peterson Trucks, and I wanted to share some insights on maintaining high quality connections or connecting while working remotely. The challenge is keeping teams together while working from home. First step is show up and choose to be present. Make the right thing easy to do. First, dress as you would for work. You're working. It also gets your mindset that this is business. No, you shouldn't wear that t-shirt. Use video whenever possible. It really helps you be on your best behavior. And it'll make sure you don't try to do email and allow you to pick up, and it also allows you to pick up body language and tone much better. A good strategy to maintain connections is to be curious. Ask a new question, not a throwaway question. Ask, tell me something great that happened recently, or when social distancing is li lifted, where do you want to go on your first trip? Asking positive questions increases engagement and connection. To increase respect, try an active listening skill called playback. All you have to do is summarize what the person said, such as, this is what I heard you say. To prompt yourself, put a little post-it note to say that says playback, something like this. on your keyboard or on your monitor. Make the right thing easy to do. Next, we need to pay attention to what has heart and meaning. First, you gotta be compassionate. This is tough. Understand that there's a lot of stress today. Fear and anxiety are rampant. Check in with the person you're talking to. It helps build trust. Second, care about the other person. Take a moment to understand what they see and hear. Lastly, listen to the words that the other person is using. Look at their body language. Make sure you feel the tone. It's easy to, it's easy to say the words, it's great. It's hard to fake it. If you sense something is wrong, ask with empath empathy. Are you okay? This is a tough time. I'm here for you. Mental energy intervention interventions, positive energy. Let's take it one step at a time. We all do it, but multitasking is not the best option. It can slow us down. It increases the likelihood of making an error in our work and even increases our risk of health issues. For important tasks that require full attention, find a quiet space to work and focus. Next, and a lot of us don't take deliberate breaks, but take a break. We need breaks throughout the day. You should aim to take a short break every 90 minutes to 120 minutes. If you feel fatigued or need a mental break, switch from one individual task to another. Second, another step is mindfulness. Be more fully present in the moment. Mindfulness has been shown to reduce stress and improve our focus, decision-making, and connection to others. It's really important to be just be aware of how you feel and what's going on. Next, I want to share with you an emotional energy intervention. Emotional energy intervention, expressing gratitude. Research su suggests that gratitude is associated with improved life satisfaction, increased social support, that's teams, that's relationships, and it can reduce uh, stress and depressive symptoms. One way to express gratitude is through a letter or an email to someone you haven't thanked enough. Be specific. Make it seem. Tell that person what they've done to help you. Trust me, very few people know how you feel or can read your mind. And lastly, be proactive. Be positive. Ha having a positive outlook on life can help you live healthier and longer. Smiling and laughter of benefits as they boost your mood as well as your teams. Help someone, whether it's giving a compliment or assisting a coworker on a project, giving others a helping virtual hand can make you feel better and encourages others to do the same. It's called teamwork. Spend more virtual time with those positive energizers in your life. Find people who also exert positive energy and minimize your interaction 
interactions with those people who bring you down. We will get through this together. Be safe and be true to your values.